Koe i a mātou e hoa, e tohu tohu i a mātou mahi katoa. Ko koe anō hoki hei whakakaha i a mātou, kia whai kororia ai koe i a mātou mahi katoa. He mea timata, he mea mahi, he mea whakaoti i rotu i a koe, kia whiwhi ai hoki mātou ki te ora tonu, i te mea, E ata whaitia nei e koe, ko ihu karaiti hoki tō mātou āreki. Āmene. Tihe Māori ora. Ko nga toki matawhaurua te waka. Ko nga puhi me te raroa, nga iwi. Hoki anga te waha pū. Koe haua. Te maunga. Tau kahawai, te awa. O Ngāti kaharau me Ngāti hau, 
ngā hapū. Te piti te marae. Ko tū haia kerepiti, rāua ko hohi pine te wake o ku mātua tūpuna. Ko Reginald Murphy, rāua ko morehu kerepiti o ku mātua. Nō reira, ko Jacinthia Murphy, tōku ingwa. Ngā mihi mahana, ngā mihi aroha ki a koutou. Te mea tuarua mā ku, tēnei au e mihi atu ki a koutou, kua tatū mai i raro tuanui o tātou zui taha Māori. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. I acknowledge everyone who has gathered today. Kei te mihi ke a koutou katoa, kua tatū mai i roto i te kaupapa nei, no mai, haere mai, whakatau mai. Haria mai o koutou tini ai tua. I welcome you all to this kaupapa, and I welcome those you have loved and bring with you. Rato kua wehe atu ki tua o te arai. Haere koto. Haere ki te pō nui, te pō roa, te pō pauri. He moe. Haere. We bring together those that we mourn. Those who have passed on. Yours and mine. We farewell them. Haere. Tata nga kanohi ora, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. To all the living eyes, those we can see. Greetings once, greetings twice, greetings three times. Whakarongo ake au Ki te reo e tangi nei He wawata tanga mai Hoki a ngā whakapaukara Hoki a ngā whakapaukara ki a Ko te hia hia e hoa ma Me hui hui mai tā taue Ki te ma Kia ora koutou. In Taha Māori, we'll be tackling our pronunciation. More specifically, we'll confront those tricky Māori vowel sounds, which in essence will boost your confidence by 75% in the use of te reo, especially 
in our liturgies. One of the most challenging things you will encounter will be the pronunciation of those vowels. Then there's the learning of words too. So much pressure. Understandably, if it seems more appealing to not use te reo at all, that saves getting into trouble. I'll just pop my disclaimer in now. I'm not a reo teacher. I'm not a te reo teacher. And I'm not a translator either. I may not hold distinguished academic qualifications. However, what I can offer you is a passion to enable and encourage you to engage more with learning how to use the reo safely, respectfully, and confidently. Our primary resource to help us achieve this is within our beloved prayer book. We'll learn a little bit about the translations, translators, some history, and where resources are available also. In this first seven part series, we'll also engage with the land of the long white cloud, a provocative doco series sure to push some of our buttons. The series was based on the celebrations in 2019 about Captain Cook and how some individuals felt about that. The series director, Jo Randerson, will join us one week to share her kōrero whakaro with us also. We may go a little bit over time in this first session, but be assured that from next week, we'll keep more closer to our one hour brief. Okay, now here's the wero or challenge from Te Tauraferi to do a mihi for Waitangi Day 2021. Titiro mai, let's look at this, let's see, this will be you in 2022. Kia ora koutou. Kia ora te whānau. Kia ora. Kia ora. Tēnā koe. Kia ora koutou. Tēnā ra koutou te whānau. Kia ora i te whānau. Ko Jack tōku ingoa. Ko Hemi Kali tōku ingoa. Ko Eyes of a Poor tōku ingoa. Ko Rahira tōku ingoa. Ko Holden tōku ingoa. Ko Ashley Bloomfield tōku ingoa. Ko Rhea Hall tōku ingoa. Nō Tauranga Moana oku tūpuna. Nō Rotorua o mātou tūpuna. Nō Texas oku tipuna. Nō Itāria me Parani oku tipuna. Nō Naitiria oku tipuna. Nō Piripini oku tipuna. Nō Natimani Poto oku tipuna. Nō Britania oku tipuna. Kei te noho au ki te rakipai whenua. Kei te noho au ki o te poti. Kei te noho au ki poe hākina. Kei te noho au ki te whanga nui atua. Kia kaha tō reo koutou mā. Kia kaha te reo Māori. Kia kaha te reo Māori. Kia kaha te reo Māori. Pukana! So here we are with the vowel sounds. A, E, E, O, U as in those words on the right hand side. So we're not using the English sound of A, E, I, O, U. It's A, E, E, O, U. And with that, I just want to say that A, E, I, O, U is not invited to Tahamari. It will get a bit crowded and the A, E, E, or ooze might take exception. So here they are now with macrons. 
you'll be familiar with macrons if you're familiar with the pages in the prayer book, particularly the new version and the online version. Uh, so the macrons have a longer sound. Ah, uh, e, e, o, u, as in those words on the right hand side. Now, during the occupation of the land out at Ihumatao, efforts to enable and entertain, let's say, non real speaking supporters was a way in which to ensure that they are considered to be part of us. Whakarongo mai. In my Maori, in my so there you have it. some of you are already familiar with that tune from our synod the Auckland Dyson Synod last year and then to further challenge us we have a combination of vowels that are strung together as if it wasn't hard enough already and the explanations in English of the right hand side is simply what the word means rather than how it sounds so we've got I or I I I Ao, au, ea, ei, eo, eu, ia, ei, sorry, ie, eo, eu, oa, Oe, oi, o, ua, ue, ui. And so that's a combination of those vowels, all the vowels that we're using in every possible combination that you see in Te Reo Māori. So if you practice those sounds and how they string together, you will be far better equipped and confident to use the L in the future. Uh, you'll see those combinations of vowels in our prayer book, many, many places. So each letter has its own mana. And so we should give that letter its mana in its own right. One of the main combination of combinations of uh, vowel sounds is in our own uh, whenua, ao, tea, roa. Ao, tea, roa. So practice your vowel sounds and your confidence will build. Um, so it's not said ao, tea, roa. And it's not said ao, tea, roa. It said ao te roa. Now the difficult uh, consonant in this case is the R. Uh, and I know the R is difficult. I can't give you an English equivalent word to help you with that R. It's a uh, about the tongue, the tongue being at the top of the palate and uh, holding it there to get the ra, 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 roa, roa, roa. Even better to have the roll, roa. Ao te roa. The other two consonants, consonants difficult to say is n g, and it's the same sound as in singing, or ringing, or dancing at the end. Uh, it's a ng 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 singing, 
So whenever you get that NG together, just go back to singing or ringing the bell. And that will give you that NG sound together. So they're the three difficult consonants that are in the te reo. Uh, over these coming weeks, we'll be covering the Māori Eucharistic liturgies on page 404, and I know you're familiar with all these already, page 476, also page 494 is He Tikanga Anō, and page 499, which is in Te Reo Māori only. Other Māori liturgies are the Tangi on page 826. Takahi Fare, or Blessing of a House, on eight, page 871. And Hura Kohatu, uh, the Memorial or Unveiling, on page 881. Other places where Te Reo appears is Mete Iriiriri, which is Baptism, Marena, Marriage, uh, Me Era Atu, and other places. There's two pages that hold Hibane. That's page 174, Tamanako Marie. Some of you may be familiar with it. It's easy to YouTube it. You'll find it on YouTube. Uh, the other one is Ma Te Marie, uh, page 177. Again, it's available on YouTube. And uh, I'll leave that to, for you to source for yourself. Within the Eucharistic liturgies is the invitation to communion. So we call that karanga kaihapa. Uh, te is on page 489, which can be used as a karanga, and page 510 also. They're the two invitations to communion. Now, the liturgy I'd like to uh, use today and to bring to your attention is on, uh, uh, on page 154, Poi, which is in the Midday Canticle. It was penned by Ta Kingi Ihaka, and here he is singing it himself. Whakarongo mai. Kia mau. I tiro he nga iwi te kapu takulinga he tau nga tenei nga nga tūpuna he poi, he poi, he poi hei. Poi politia, poi takawiri tau patu patu, tau patu patu, tau patu patu, ko te tau. Patu patu taku poi, kārere taku poi. Ere tika atu wana ka tau ki ngā pui, kei reira te toka, kei rangi houa, kei o i hira, ko te toka tēnā, i paua i hoa i te rongo paira e i kamau. Hei whaka gloria, hei whaka gloria, te atu e runga laua ka mau, te rongo kia o te aroa, te nga ano rā, ko āna pura pura i rui rui arā, i roto i ngā iwi, ka tupu ka hua e hua nei. Piti rawa atu ko e ki a rau ka wakoro ta waitoa hei mata mua kei roto wanga nui ko te tauri ka tae ngā rongo ki ngā tiru anui ko māni he rara ko kere o pa hoki. I whakamatea nei mō te whakapono e katau. Ka rere taku pō e ki te tai rā fiti kei rere ngā ki ana ko tau matākura kei mātā tua ko ngā kukura kei te ārawa ko i hāiwa. Kei roto ka humunu ko te wera rā e 
ते वेरा कतु ही कलरपा कवी रते रंगे तू ही को नये तो ये ते वका ते उतंगा ओरुंगा कोते आरोहा पहेरे चमाई ते रंगी मारिए ओए now that recording is available on our website, our Anglican website. It is available if you go to resources and then uh, scroll down to uh, Te Reo Māori resources. You'll find that recording uh, available to you and you'll also find recordings to the 476 and the 499 Eucharistic liturgies. So the resources are there available for you. Land of the Long White Clouds, a seven-part series, tells the stories of white New Zealanders, and as I said, that's the uh, Radio New Zealand description, who are confronting our colonial past and present, 250 years after Cook's arrival. Our government poured billions of dollars into commemorating Captain Cook's arrival. But why were we doing this? Many Pākehā were unhappy with the celebration of colonisation and demanded that some start to take responsibility. Titi Romai, two episodes, one and two. This year marks the 250th anniversary of the first face-to-face -face meeting between Tangata Whenua and the European sailors. Captain James Cook's ship Endeavour coming to our shores for two year to 50, the reenactment of Cook's journey. The critics say spending $23 million to mark such a divisive moment is wrong. Many years ago, we probably wouldn't even have been close to these conversations. It's hard as it is. There's people out there, I can just say the word treaty and their nostrils start to flare up. We are the problem. We always have been since Cook arrived. Yeah, who, de who decided <laughs> that we should do this? I understand the uh, resistance two commemorations of Cook's landing, or as some say of that invasion and of that violence. That term Cook discovered New Zealand is, just shocks me that people could think that and not seeing that the land had already been very well discovered, thank you. I don't know about that word commemorations and what we're actually doing and when we're just celebrating and glorifying something, because I think that whole heroising is absolutely wrong. He arrived all right. But what happened after that has been horrendous for Māori. And if we don't understand that in our hearts, then we will never really move on as a nation, or as Pākehā, to, to, to put it in context as to the consequences of that. Lead in the sun. Hello. Oh, hello, hello, hello. When I first made my way down to New Zealand in 1769, I was told to go and find the great unknown southern continent. Everyone was looking for it at the time, you know, the Dutch, uh, the Spanish, the French, bleh, hate the French. <laughs> Amazingly, the way it worked was the first one to get there and pop their flag down wins, all theirs. You know, that's colonization. Pop your flag down, bam, that's mine. <laughs> Inherent in this coming together in the process of Cook is, is this process of colonization, which is a violent process um, aimed at destroying Indigenous people. I don't think non-Māori realise the impact of colonisation on Māori and on themselves, on ourselves. When we don't even have an awareness, how can we then begin to take honourable action? My ancestors came here, we took over, we murdered and plundered, we set up an agreement to try and work together and ignored that. Because you try to give yourself permission about the past. Don't blame me, I didn't take the land. I didn't stop the language, it's not my fault. What I've done is maintained my privilege by ignoring the past. 
It takes strength to go past guilt. And maybe it's helpful to realize that it's a self-indulgent excuse in a way. It's good to be guilty when you first find out, I think, but to see it as a stage and not to stay there and to change from guilt to responsibility. I still still do kind of struggle with the whole Pākehā paralysis kind of thing, like, oh, what if I, you know, do something wrong? Even just labelling it is, is a really important step because once you've labelled it, then you can get over it <laughs> and you can actually do something useful with it. We've got to find a better way, a more caring way. We have to challenge ourselves. The treaty is inspiring to me. It's a, it's a blueprint for how we can work together. And so that for me is the vision. If we honour Te Tiriti, we'd address so many of the issues that are facing this country in terms of the um, injustice and imbalance that we see. And so why wouldn't we do that? Because it'll create a better Aotearoa for everybody. We have to be able to um, believe that we can do this. And history will show us that we can. But anyway, that's all hindsight, you know? To look back in the past, wonder what you could have done differently. <laughs> I wasn't trying to think about how to incorporate hindsight into my day-to-day -day business, you know? Sort of look back into the past and see what it informs in your actions in the future. Sort of like looking backwards in order to move forward. You're looking backwards in order to move forward. Right, so, okay, need a little bit of practice at that, don't I? Ha. Well, anyway, come on, let's go. By 1890, 90% of Naitahu were landless. In that same period, my Pākehā ancestor could win lands in a running race. As Pākehā, we don't have the tools to understand the now because we don't understand our history. I identify as Pākehā. What that means is people of white European descent, particularly um, coloniser descent. So it's a conflicted identity in that sense. Some of the stories of our ancestors carry that conflict that we sit with as Pākehā New Zealanders. That conflict of wanting it to be a different history than it actually is. It was really interesting to me when Mum told me about my ancestors, Joseph and Bessie Doyle, who had this positive relationship with Horikiri and Tenekiri Tairoa. Horikiri Tairoa was an MP for Southern Māori and was travelling a lot, and so my ancestors used to look after their property. My great-great-grandfather was known as an outspoken supporter of Māori representation in Parliament in the late 1800s, and I think it came, obviously, from that friendship. So there were people who were supporters, and one of my ancestors was a supporter of Māori representation and Māori rights, and that seemed like a positive, honourable thing. It was then really interesting for me digging deeper and finding my great-great-grandfather's obituary, and in that it said that he was a good runner, and that one of the more memorable prizes that he won for winning a running race were two parcels of land on the Canterbury Plains. That was Naitahu lands, and this was in the late 1800s. By 1890, 90% of Naitahu were landless. They either didn't have any land or didn't have enough land for economic survival. And they're the very lands that his friend, Horikiri Tairoa, is fighting for justice in relation to. That challenged me to think about what I was needing or wanting my ancestors to be and what narrative I was wanting to create. Whatever I find out about my ancestor, the thing for me is about what am I doing about all of this. It was actually, you know, in a place of privilege at, in a fourth year paper at Canterbury University that I first learned about Te Stiti o Waitangi. I was pissed off that I, would, I hadn't learned that stuff. We can't understand Te Tiriti itself if we don't understand this context of hundreds of years of settlement of tangata whenua and that they had all the systems in place of law, of education, health, and then understanding the process that followed, which was a complete disregard of Te Tiriti and the process of colonisation. I just felt like it was so critical to have that understanding. And so then I went into adult education where there was a need to communicate that understanding to a broader audience. 
So when we turn to thinking about honouring Te Tiriti, it's about the restoration of balance. Well, it's always been really clear that my responsibility is to be speaking to my own people, because some of the big blocks to a healthy society are Pākehā, <laughs> blocking Māori being able to pursue their own health and wellbeing. Obviously, I do stuff because I want to shift our understanding as Pākehā and our work to honour Te Tiriti, but within that, I don't step out of my Pākehā privilege. This is Green Road, um, where I grew up in Doylston. My great-great-grandfather arrived in 1864. He was a 21-year-old Scottish farm labourer. Not long after that, he purchased land on the Canterbury Plains, land that Tangata Whenua had had relationships with for hundreds of years before. The area that he purchased was named Doylston, after him, by him, for him. There wasn't the conversation around, well, did this place already have a name? I don't know what happened with those lands. We don't own it. It says in his obituary he didn't give them back. Whether he did any restoration around that, I don't know. I got to grow up on these lands, actually having no idea <laughs> about any of the history. There's material privilege that comes from growing up on stolen lands. There's the privilege of the kids in the school books having the same colour skin as me, the same types of names. In the media, you know, my people, Pākehā, being positively portrayed. And that's the privilege, that you become the normal. There's a whole loss of understanding Māori ways of being in this place. You know, hundreds of years of ways of doing things that I grew up with no knowledge of. But the fact that I can succeed in a society without that knowledge, that's how privilege works. We all have a responsibility in terms of restoring balance in Aotearoa to do what we can. Things like learning about where your people came from, how they got to be here. Thinking about well, where do I have influence? What can I do amongst my family, amongst my community? It is about challenging your own patterns of thinking and understanding. And that's never something that you kind of tick off. I can't change the story of my ancestors, but I can try to build a different future. No my hoki mai. No doubt there are many mixed feelings about this opener in the series. And this is only the start of a deeper korero talk and whakaro sharing of thoughts in the coming weeks. So let's break out to consider the series and any insights you might have to offer us when you come back. Uh, we have some facilitators in your room. They are Kim, Paul, Jendi, Julianne, and myself. So, uh, haere tonu and uh, come back with some insights. Ten minutes in a breakout room. Kia ora koutou. Okay, you should be able to hear me now. Uh, no mai hoki mai. Uh, thank you for participating in the breakout rooms. And of course, 10 minutes is never enough, is it? You know, oh, <laughs> we were just warming up. Um, so uh, the facilitators of the rooms, um, could I uh, ask you, please, uh, we'll start with Paul. Uh, if you would unmute yourself, Paul, and uh, just give us the insight from your group. Kia ora. Um, what a wonderful group and really, really good insights. Um, it's, it's hard just to pick one, but um, uh, a lot was around our privilege and ability to succeed without realizing the privilege, the sea we're swimming in, and how do we restore a balance? And, um, and, and how do we challenge those who refuse to acknowledge their privilege? We, we, we've got this Western identity of collective privilege, and so how do we make inroads? Um, and how do we acknowledge um, 
uh, walking backwards into the future, how do we embrace other worldviews that will be mutually affirming, I, I think. So, um, and challenge to learn our whakapapa, where do I come from, where do I fit in, and how do, I suppose, enhancing mana, yeah. Mm. And I've encouraged the people to put in chats, if I've missed it, I got it completely wrong, then you'll... <laughs> Kia ora. Kia ora. thank you, Paul. Thank you, uh, group two, I think it is, uh, for sharing those pakaro with us. Uh, could I ask Julian, please, to report back, unmute yourself? Certainly. Um, our, our group, um, everyone raised their hand with no abstentions that um, uh, people expressed that they felt affected in their own way by the film. Um, but the simple insight that we agreed on was through understanding an encounter in parentheses with Maori culture and customs is the way that we can move forward. And that's it at the moment, given 10 minutes, it has to begin with understanding an encounter in order to move forward. That's Fabulous. our group. Thank you, Julian. Thank you very much. Uh, that's the Fakaro from Group One. Uh, Gendi, please unmute yourself. Um, it's Jen D here. Oh, and Jen D, I'm sorry. It's okay. We had Liam with us, so I'm not quite sure what happened to Liam's group. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, we ran out of time, so I'm summarising on behalf of everyone. The there was a range of emotions, I guess, from kind of uncomfortable and challenged and, and where to now, you know, what do we do with the guilt to move forward, but maybe some guilt is appropriate, even if it's not personal guilt. Um, a couple of people from other countries, you know, more recently had a different kind of take on a few things too. But then it's, it's time for us as Pākehā to probably embrace our role to move this forward, you know, and, and how to actually put some skin to that. Um, we're in the complexities of it. It's all we kind of got this, you know, yeah, we too now. We too now. Wonderful words. Thank you, Jendi. Thanks very much, uh, Group 4. Was, was there something more, Jendi? No, all done. Thank you. And uh, Liam, we'll excuse you for migrating. Uh, we are in lockdown, by the way, uh, you know, migrating to other places where <laughs> you might have to go into quarantine. All good. Um, Kim B, Group 5, please unmute yourself. Yeah, kwe, kinora, kia ora. Um, I think much of what's been said already, we canvassed in our group, um, and there was a willingness for everyone to acknowledge that that uh, that section, those the video, had an impact on us all. What kept coming back to was the two young men at the end who were sitting at the table, and I. In some sense, it is quite remarkable that they were able to voice what most of us were feeling: is that the idea of how do you get past the guilt, past the sense of privilege that we have, and by naming it, was they were saying naming it is the way forward. Um, but there was a sense in which all of us felt that we were um, able to move forward if we embarked on the journey, as Paul was saying. And I think that's uh, really what we were we were getting to. We had a mixed group of um, different different people from different countries as well, and uh, engaging with some of us for the first time. And that's quite interesting. Uh, so that's where we were at. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Group Five, uh, for your participation in that. Uh, I filled in for Liam in uh, Group 3, uh, and we certainly echo everything that's already been said. Uh, one of the things uh, that came out of that, which might be a little bit different to, to what we've already heard, was at some point, should we be forgiving ourselves? Should we forgive ourselves? And then from there, we might be able to move forward, as it were. And... Um, as a starting point. So if we forgive ourselves and uh, if all that's happened and our heritage and our privilege and all of that, if we just forgive ourselves 
then we're actually able to move into a place of desire, of wanting to learn, of wanting to do more, and of wanting to take more responsibility as Pākehā to make a difference in the future. So that was kind of our insight there. Uh, of course, 10 minutes, as I say, uh, is, is never enough. It's never enough. But thank you so much, everybody, for engaging with that. It's been a really, really good first series for us. And uh, there's more to come, of course. There's more of those discussions for us to have. Uh, next week, of course, uh, we won't have my pepeha. <laughs> we won't have all that stuff at the beginning. So we'll have a little bit more time to engage more uh, deeper and more in-depth in our uh, breakout rooms, etc., and to engage with the liturgy, to engage with the vowel sounds, to engage what this is all about, taha Māori, and of course, encouraging and enabling you to use all the te reo Māori in the prayer book and being able to incorporate that into your weekly services, into your bedside vigils, into your pastoral uh, ministry roles, be you clergy or laity. There's a role for all of us in the church and in ministry. So I'd like to leave you there at the moment, and I'd like us to close with a krakia whakamutunga, a closing uh, prayer, and the grace. Please feel free to say it with me, but can I ask that you remain muted for the purpose of recording? Just remain muted and say it along with me. If the words and everything are up on the screen. Kia tau, kia tātou katoa. Te atawhai o tō tātou āreki o ihu karaiti. Me te aroha o te atua. Me te whiwhinga tahitanga. I te wairua tapu. Āke, āke, āke. Āmene. If you have any feedback, anything at all that you'd like to forward to myself, Megan, uh, please just send it to that email address or pop things in the chat box uh, and we'll say that. And as I say, engage with that uh, sometime in the future. So all feedback to lsm at aucklandanglican.org.nz. Uh, ka kite a koutou next Thursday, the 19th, 10 a.m., same time, noho ora mai, kia ora. Uh, and feel free to stay on after this if you'd like a casual kōrero, ka pai, ka pai or have any queries, partai questions, we'll do a separate recording so you can now uh, uh, unmute yourself at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, no reire te whanau. Tēnā koutou katoa. Mm -hmm.